All right, my friends, we are here at the Audioholic Smart House, boots on the ground. We got Shane Rich from RBH Sound. We are gonna be talking about some new subwoofers in this video. Hey folks, I'm Gene Delasala with Audioholics. How you doing, my friend Shane? Doing great. Good to be here, Gene. You know, every time this guy comes to my place, we want to bring in more products. He's like the drug dealer of audio. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, I probably am. That's why all of my friends' wives, when they see me coming to the home, they draw the curtains and lock the door. I, I could imagine that. <laughs> and, you know, part of it is my problem. I come up with the scenarios and how I can make this system better at the Audioholic, Audioholic Smart House. As you guys know, I've got the SVTRS active system. I have the sidewalls, the on-wall speakers. I've got the eight inch uh, in-ceiling speakers, the 815s we just put in. Uh -huh. And we've got five subwoofers in here. But what I wanted to do in this room is I just wanted to re further refine if that's even possible because we got the sound really dialed in. Now the front speakers are ported the SVTRSs, I had rear ported subwoofers like this guy right here, the 1212 ported, and I had another version of it, which is the bigger box. I'm not even gonna mess with the model numbers because <laughs> RBH, RBH's biggest issue, in my opinion, is I can't remember their model numbers. I don't even think you can remember them. You're the oh, one no. designing them. No, I can't. <laughs> so we added the 21 inch sub, which was a game changer in terms of infrasonic. And I noticed it tightened up the system response. Uh -huh. And I'm at the point now where I'm slowly converting all of my ported subs to sealed just because we have so much headroom already. Uh -huh. So I think it's worth losing a little headroom to go sealed because it gives you a little bit tighter sound. The one thing I noticed was switching from one of these kind of subs to this new one that you have here, which is sealed, is the base not only tightened up at the front row, but it was completely non-localizable. Uh -huh. And I think when I had the ported subs so close to behind me, I was locating the sound from the pressure waves, maybe from the port or whatever it was that was causing that. Some of it could have been the height of the sub too. Yeah, because yeah. the drivers were high up like this. Yeah. So, so this is a really cool sub. I'm gonna call it the 1212 Compact. You, of course, are gonna say the real <laughs> model number if you can remember it. Yes, it's the 1212SFR. There's yes. a P, there's a P in there, I think. You're right, 1212P <laughs> SFRS. Okay, see yes. what I'm saying? He doesn't know his own model numbers. <laughs> So this was kind of my idea for Shane to do. I wanted to have a driver that fires down on the floor because you do get a uh, more of a coupling effect having that driver close to the floor, mm -hmm. but also it's on a riser platform that we that Matthew Pose helped me design that resonates on the back row. And it added a tactile dimension to that riser that I couldn't get with just the conventional uh, both drivers firing forward. Uh -huh. And the great thing about the sub is it all of these subs use the same driver. They use that same 12 inch driver. They're just different form factors. That's one thing I love about the brand RBH is they customize. If you wanna have a certain form factor fit, you guys are making all the cabinets in the USA. Yes. Uh -huh. So you, right could, literally, you yeah. could literally design a cabinet to fit within the application for the client, right? Yeah, we do it all the time. We have dealers call us up uh, with a specific need for a speaker or subwoofer to fit in a specific location. We make them custom sized for their application. Gotcha. So I want to first start with this sub. This is the old form factor for the SVTRS, these beautifully finished rounded cabinets. These are going to go eventually go away, right? You're going to be doing different cabinetry going forward. Well, so this product has been around for a while and uh, very unique in terms of the you know piano black finish that we have on this product. It was part of our, again, SV series product. Mm -hmm. We had a full line of speakers that had this type of finish. Uh, now that we're making product locally, we can still do this uh, finish, but the form factor with the curve, we've been kind of getting away from. So it's it's more of a traditional rectangular box type look, but we have some uh, ways to dress that up with uh, fancier baffles or side panels. So we have yeah. other options to keep that a little more, uh, you know, uh, decorative look, I guess you could say. Or you can 
spend a little less money, go without some of the frills and have the same performance in a little bit lower price enclosure that's uh, just not as fancy. Right. So this sub, uh, we've reviewed this sub uh, years ago and you can see all the data on that. This received our Baseaholics Extreme rating. So this is a very high output, very capable dual 12. Uh, would you say that having dual 12 inch drivers like this is equivalent to a really high output 18? Yes, yeah, in terms of the actual cone area, it's, it's very much on par with a, an 18 inch driver. Why don't you give us a little bit details on the 12 inch? Cause this is a really special driver. I've never been able to bottom it out. I've never yeah. really heard it distress. Give us some specs or what's unique about this 12 inch driver. Well, first of all, what's unique is that it is our proprietary design. You know, we custom designed this product in house and uh, we have our manufacturing pro uh, partners make it for us, but it's unique to us. Nobody else has this driver on the market. And, you know, it was made with the concept that I had in mind of what the best, uh, you know, performance and design parameters would be for a 12. Uh, it's got a three inch voice coil, three inch uh, diameter, um, it's uh, essentially a uh, 20 millimeter length on the voice coil, 70% uh, BL uh, type of spec. And then, um, you know, in terms of power handling, it can just handle what seems to be endless amounts of power. Uh, so it, it's, it's the kind of driver that is really uh, I think it excels is not just a sub driver, but also what it does in the mid base. I mean, mm -hmm. you can have drivers that are sub drivers that just, you know, all they're really good for is just subwoofer use. But we use this in some of our passive designs of like the 12 uh, SV, sorry, the SVTRS that you've got here where, you know, it's a higher up crossover. Yeah, we cross those over like 150 hertz. Yeah, or so. 150 yeah. hertz, even higher. So it's it's really a, an all-purpose, all around. It's a wide bandwidth. Wide bandwidth. Base driver. Yeah, it has resonance frequency that's, you know, right around 20 hertz. So it, it's very capable of real subuse in a sealed or vented des design. Uh, the QTS, one of those teal small small parameters of this driver is right in the 0.4 range and so it works really ideally in, in a vented or sealed design. We can use it either way and that's what how we're showing it that, here. So that, I was going to bring that up as a talking point. The fact that you can use this either in a sealed or vented enclosure and not have to have a different driver is pretty unique. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it really has to do with the Q of the driver, the bandwidth efficiency product of the driver. It's it's right there in the, you know, 50 range of the bandwidth efficiency product. And so it, it can go either way as a sealed or vented uh, uh subwoofer driver. Well, I could tell you guys, when I went from the ported dual 12 in the back left of me, um, mm -hmm. that sub was great, but I did feel like I could localize the pressure wave or just the base itself. And when I switched to this subwoofer, even though it has less output, I think it was about maybe five or six dB, I had to turn it up to, to mm -hmm. match the volume of the 1212 ported. Mm -hmm. The base just integrated better and it matches the system cue on this, on all of these sealed subs is the same as the 21 inch sub, which is what, 0.7? Uh-huh, yep. So my theory is get all of my rear subs sealed with the same system cue, mm -hmm. get that integrated with my ported subs in the front, and then I'm mm -hmm. gonna have base magic. Yep, yeah, it should be an overall improvement in your room specifically. Now, again, everybody's rooms are a little bit different. In a larger environment, I'd probably still say you might wanna keep with some of the vented mm -hmm. subs just for output purposes, because you can get a six to, 9, 10 dB advantage in output capability with a vented sub um, in a large box, you know, with a good sized port. So there are, and, and even with the vented subs, we keep the equivalent Q, system Q very, very low. Uh, it's essentially a, um, a design where it's ported really low so that it allows uh, the overall Q of the system to to still be really 
relatively low for a vented system. And it keeps the, the group delay low as yeah, well. Yeah, it keeps the group yeah. delay low as well. Yeah. Well, my purpose here with this subwoofer, this is historically used as an in-ceiling or in-wall sub, right? Because it's uh -huh. a nine-inch deep cabinet. Um, I wanted to see what it would do if we put it behind my back row with the drivers firing down at the floor. Right. So you have a whole system where you, we're going to put feet and outriggers on it. Uh -huh. You could turn it sideways or you could do it floor uh, mounted as well, right? Right. Yep. Now, the other thing too is these drivers are black. So you could do them uh, anodized black or you could use the original uh, silver. Personally, I love the look of the black. If I would, if I were doing this whole system again, I would do it all with the black drivers. I think it just looks badass. It's become sort of the trend, you could say. It used to be we didn't sell as many products with the black drivers in it. Now, black is the more popular look. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. But either way you like it, I think the product looks great. So from a cabinet volume standpoint, is this similar to the 1212 here? Very, very similar. Yep. Within just a fraction of a cubic foot either way. And so the performance is really the same either way you go. That's what's nice. We have a lot of products that can go either in ceiling, in wall, and they're going to perform the same as our freestanding products. Yeah. So if you guys are building a room from scratch and you're down to the, uh, the rafters and the two by fours or two by eights or two by nines, whatever, depending on the ceiling, this is the great approach to put these in before the drywall is up, put them in the corners in the back of the room, in the front of the room, and you'll have, and you're even set up for Trinov waveforming with a subwoofer like this, because you could put these against the walls. Oh too. yeah, sure, yeah. In fact, we, we've, uh, I was just talking to Matt Pose not very long ago about a system he's doing that's gonna be potentially a waveforming type system. Uh, so yeah, there are a lot of, uh, there's a lot of flexibility in the product that we do in terms of the subwoofers and how they can be used in a room. So we're really excited to give it a, a shot in mm -hmm. here and see how things go with this new subwoofer. Let's talk a little bit about the amplifier option. So not only do you have different form factors, whether you want an in-wall subwoofer or you want a compact or you want the larger rounded cabinet, you also offer the ability to use plate amplifiers or use rack mountable amplifiers. Mm -hmm. In most cases, if you can go with the rack mounted amp, I think that's advantageous because you get more power, you get you know much better reliability having that out of the subwoofer. Yeah. And it just looks cool to have all your amplifiers rack mounted. Talk a little bit about the amplifier design and, and the software interface because you have you have a lot of flexibility of customizing the sound with what you did with the software on that. Yeah, so it's a really robust Class D platform that we uh, have co-developed with our manufacturing partner. Uh, basically, we have about a 2,000, it's a 2,000 watt amplifier as a plate amp that can be built into any of the subs. Uh, 2400 watt uh, per channel. So all of our options at the moment uh, are, are two channel as far as the chassis amplifier, or outboard chassis. Now, in the case of your uh, 21 inch sub, uh, that is a uh, bridge design, and so it's got over 4,000 watts of power. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it, the basic platform is the same. Uh, so same type of quality and components in the uh, plate amp versus the outboard amp, uh, just different power options. We do have a smaller uh, amplifier that's our 1202 that will basically do 1200 watts per channel um, in that small 1U chassis type design. Gotcha. And I, I do like the software interface because it gives me not only PEQ function, like m lots of bands. I don't mm -hmm. even remember how many bands, but there's plenty of bands of PEQ. It also yeah. has over the, 30. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, way more than you probably would ever use, more than even I would For use. And sub, I'm, I'm yeah. pretty fanatical about dialing things in. <laughs> you also have the ability to add delay. Yep. which is a lot of subwoofer companies overlook that. And the, the advantage to that is if you only have one subwoofer out from your preamp or your processor, you could actually add delay to the subs that are closer to you with the software here. Um, that gives you the ability now to get all your subwoofers time aligned even with only one subwoofer out. So yep. that's really cool. And you've got all pass filter function. And I actually had to use an all pass filter on the 21 to get it to integrate with the entire system much better than I could have without it. Oh, for sure. Yeah, it's ideal for 
for coupling in a system the sealed and vented subs right. to be able to have that option to adjust only the phase uh, of the subs relative to each other. Yeah. So guys, if you're setting up a system and you're thinking about RBH subwoofers, and if you're not a very experienced calibrator, I would probably tell you stick with all vented or stick with all sealed. But if you're more of an advanced user uh, or you have a professional calibrator that really understands how to integrate subwoofers, it is possible for you to mix sealed and ported like I'm doing. So our 21 inch sub handles all the infrasonic and you get the benefit of the room gain. That's one advantage of sealed subs that don't show up in CEA 2010 numbers is if you compare a sealed versus ported sub of, of, of identical amps and drivers and even similar cabinet volumes, the port sub is always at an advantage when you're measuring it anechoic, like in a ground plane scenario. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't factor in the room gain you get from a sealed sub. So when you stick a sealed sub in a room, the roll off, the high pass on it is second order versus a vented system, which yep. is fourth order. Uh -huh. That's why I'm able to get, you know, flat response down to five or six hertz, basically the limit of my microphone, not the subwoofer, because my microphone is only calibrated to what, 20 hertz? Yeah. So yeah. you have to use a specialized microphone. Uh, 10 hertz. Your, yours is 10, 10 hertz. hertz. Mine okay. is 5 hertz. So we've been doing some measurements with mine. Absolutely. And, yeah. So so you're at the point now where you can make subwoofers that are, you have to use special microphones to measure the <laughs> infrasonic capability. And yeah. these guys offer that. They offer subwoofers that give you true infrasonic bass. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a good overview of these subwoofers. I'm going to be doing more follow-up after I get this new subwoofer integrated with that sub and the rest of the system. And I'll talk to you guys more about that experience. Um, don't forget about Dream Media. They're our official channel uh, sponsor here. They're an official uh, RBH authorized dealer of all your products, right? Yep. They so are. they've done tons of installs. Check out their mm -hmm. check out their channel. Check out the affiliate links below if you are interested in purchasing some of these subwoofers. Guys, if you like this video, please hit the thumb up, hit subscribe. Don't forget about our Patreon channel at patreon.com slash audiohawks. We appreciate your support. You get direct access to me if you want to suggest video topics. And until next time, my friends, keep listening. Check, 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 talk. I, th I think you're fully in frame. Let me just check one more time. I hate having heads cut off. All right, you ready? Ready. All right. Go like this with your hand. Yeah, you're pretty much in frame. Can you see that sub though? Hold on. And move it over more. If you turn it on the uh, tripod, you could maybe get it a little closer. You got your one leg of the tripod, or you could get it for a little further back if you need to.